B or C or D. So just wanted to do a quick uh, thing on supplements and then we can discuss it. And how to combine them and when. How to combine yeah. them and when. Exactly. That's the hardest exactly. part. Yeah. So the supplement, vitamin and supplement industry has really, really taken off. Uh, how many of you, when you had children going to college or if you had children going to school, you almost felt guilty if you did not give them the gummy bears, you know? So they, they advertise it like this. They love gummy bears and you love them. So the subliminal message here is if you don't give them gummy bears, you're a bad mother. Uh, or the best gift you can give to a college going child is a pack of vitamins. Um, so, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, what is really good vitamins and supplements for human beings to, to be able to assimilate and digest? So, what you get in your basic commercial supplement is vitamin C, which is very cheap. Anyone know what vitamin C is made from? Usually corn, usually, which is usually GMO. Oh, God. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Um, typically, corn and wheat but increasingly vitamin C is made from ket keto acids. And so a uh, lot of it is very synthetically made. Some of it is made from corn and wheat. Most of the corn and wheat is uh, genetically modified and, and pretty laden with uh, pesticides. Uh, you have B1, B2, B3, B6, folic acid, which is vitamin B9. You have B12, you have pantothenate, vitamin H or biotin, everyone heard of biotin. A, D, K, potassium iodide, and so on. And then there's other formulas where they'll add more bioidentical um, flavonoids that help you digest those vitamins better. They'll be in ester form, fat form, and so on. So that's, that's your standard supplements that you get. Uh, in the last 60, 70 years, they've started marketing them to children, gummy bears for children, you know, Centrum Senior, Senior for men, Centrum for women, premenopausal women, postmenopausal women, you know, people with this, that, or the other disease. So the bigger segments are prenatal children, mature, men's, women's, diabetic uh, vitamins, stress vitamins, that's a new thing, hot new thing. Mm -hmm. And so these sell a lot, these sell a lot, um, um, and a lot of people think that a vitamin will give them that quick hit that'll help them deal with stress, and sometimes they do. Forms are tablets, capsules, bulk powder, liquid. The doses could be anywhere from one to three, uh, once a day, twice a day, thrice a day, several times a day. And the vitamins are classified by your daily requirements, uh, required daily allowances that the USDA publishes. So it's 100% or 5% or 3%. And so have you asked yourself the question, what is it based on, the 5%, the 3%, and so on? If you look at a vitamin, it'll say you get 100% of this, you get 50% of that, you get 2% of this. Anyone guess what it's based on? I think that it's the minimum that your body needs not to have major problems. Or what they say is the minimum. Yeah. So the minimum is 100%. But yeah, no, the, the 100%, that number that, that's the minimum. is based yes. on, that's the minimum. you yes. know, yeah. That they aren't really very scientific, yes. in my opinion. So it's all over the place. In other words, it's all over the place. It's what the marketing uh, company wants to mix as a blend of vitamins. And frequently, it's based on price. So biotin is 4,000 bucks a pound, and vitamin C is dirt cheap. So you're going to always have more vitamin C and less biotin. But if you need biotin to assimilate the B vitamins, uh, and you don't have it, you're not, you're gonna basically excrete it out of your feces or your urine. So things that cannot be assimilated are kind of not useful. So that is something you wanna keep in mind. <coughs> high potency typically means much higher vitamin C or vitamin B and some other enhanced vitamins or mineral levels, but largely the less expensive ones, largely the less expensive ones. Oh, and just let me just share with you, they closed the door. Oh, okay. Out there. Okay, no problem. Um, so the components that are lower in RDA are generally the more expensive ones. And so when you have biotin, it's usually three to th five to thirty percent of RDA in many formulations. The problem is you need it to be present at a hundred percent to digest the B vitamins. And if you don't have a hundred percent of your biotin in your B vitamin capsules, you're not 
assimilating the B, meaning it's not going into your body. So that is something to keep in mind. Boron and magnesium are uh, required for the absorption of vitamin D and calcium. Similarly, to uh, assimilate your minerals, you need fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, K, and E. And guess what they're present in? Anyone take a guess what fat-soluble vitamins are present in? Raw milk. They're present in raw milk, they're present in animal fats. All animal fats contain the fat-soluble vitamins. So you cannot assimilate minerals unless you have some of the fat-soluble vitamins, which means they have to be accompanied by a fat. Uh, what foods have magnesium in them? Uh, any food with a green leafy, uh, green leaf oh, in it. So oh, okay. the green part of the leaf is chlorophyll, and the center of the chlorophyll is a molecule of magnesium. What is hemoglobin to humans is chlorophyll to the plants, and so anything that's a dark, deep leafy green contains magnesium. And the best way to eat that is in the form of that leafy green mixed with a lot of fats yes. because you need the fats to digest the magnesium. Um, and then you have varying compositions for varying groups. So a postmenstrual woman should not be eating a general vitamin which contains iron for premenstrual use. Or if you have a disease called hemochromatosis, you absolutely do not want to eat anything with iron in it because it can be deadly because you are storing too much iron. So I have, I have more iron pen. Mm -hmm. Should I use that much or I want to use that? Uh, iron in general for postmenopausal women is not a good idea unless you're a vegan, you're in a, you know, you're in a plant based diet, and you're anemic. But if you're eating regular meats and liver, uh, you don't need iron supplementation at all. And also understand that anyone in this room who is of European descent, the reason you're alive today is because your ancestors in the Middle Ages fought the plague and lived to reproduce, to have children. And the people that lived through the plague were the people who had iron storage capability. So by default, anyone who's emigrated to the United States from Europe has a high ability to store iron. Any iron you add to that is going to be toxic. And iron causes a whole bunch of diseases. Uh, iron, is, uh, iron is very subject to oxidation, especially iron that goes in through your vitamins. And so you want to be very careful supplementing. Does that mean you should be careful about using an iron skillet? Uh, if you have high iron overlo uh, overload, so yeah. check your ferritin levels, mm -hmm. check your transferrin, your iron saturation levels in your blood, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, but anything you eat that is natural and normal will not increase your iron load the way a supplement will. So Supp chicken, liver. Yeah. chicken liver is a very good idea. So, so just remember that there are some things that are actually toxic in a supplement or a vitamin, and iron is one of the key things to watch out for. Is that for children too? Uh, very much so, very much so. Children that were fed iron in um, pregnancy, when the mom was um, pregnant and you know, postnatal, a uh, lot of problems with iron overload. They put iron uh, fortification in the Cheerios and all the cereals. Um, it's creating an epidemic of iron storage related diseases. And what are those? Um, you, your, your iron oxidizes in your blood. Um, iron has to be stored by the liver. Uh, there's a great deal of increase in metabolic disease, diabetes, cardiovascular risk, risk of cancer, and so on and so forth. And you find that people who have higher iron tend to have much more metabolic disease. And those and don't show up when you're little. Uh, those show up in your 30s, 40s, and 50s, but it starts much earlier in your life. There's one way to test, and that is to test your genes to see if you have iron storage genes, uh, if you're homozygous or heterozygous for iron storage genes through 23andMe. So that's a oh, great way to check that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. For 200 bucks, mm -hmm. you can test your spit, and they'll tell you if you are homozygous or heterozygous for some of the iron storage genes. 23andMe. So how are supplements made? So can anyone name brands of supplements that you particularly liked or have used in the past? Gaia. Gaia. That's my favorite. Solgar. 
now. Now, okay. Well, so let me yeah, standard pro let me tell you, most of the supplement makers do not make their own vitamin powders. What you're looking at is people who brand the supplements, brand the vitamins, and so what's happening <laughs> is very specialized labs all over the world produce very specialized things. Like one lab will produce vitamin C, one produces magnesium, and they have their sources, which could be 90% of the sources today are synthetic, meaning petrochemical products, products of manufacturing, um, uh, not waste, but the leftovers from manufacturing, you know, whey after making Greek yogurt, or, or soy cake after pressing out the soy oil, or the dregs of oranges, uh, so on and so forth or corn and wheat, a lot of which is uh, very, very genetically modified and has a lot of chemical impurities to begin with, inherent to it. And then when you process it further, uh, they're not tested for purity for a lot of the other contaminants. So there's two things that happen. One is the manufacturing contaminant that get into the vitamins and supplements. And the, the other is the contaminants in the raw materials, two separate things. <coughs> The manufacturing contaminants are things like aluminum, nickel, cadmium, the stuff that happens on the assembly line. Uh, the cellulose, the starches that are used to put the pellets together, break them apart, the fats that are added, the sugars that are added, those are the manufacturing contaminants. And then the raw material contaminants are very different. <coughs> so when you make corn oil, <coughs> For instance, you use a substance called hexane to extract the corn oil. It's carcinogenic, and that goes into the cake that's left over, from which a bunch of vitamins are made. Anything that has bees or, you know, the animal vitamins, um, they're not made from organic or pastured animals. They're, get, they're made from the uh, animals that get processed, the non-organic animals that get processed. and. Pretty much everything gets concentrated 10 to 100 fold in those things. Now you could go ask for organic vitamins, you could ask for organic animal liver, but that's very hard to come by and it's going to be very, very expensive. If you're paying, you know, 10 bucks a pound for pastured liver, do you think someone's going to sell you a box of pellets for 10 bucks? No, it's going to be 50 to 100 dollars for pastured <coughs> animal liver desiccated. So. So the specialized labs produce all these vitamins and minerals. They have something called a certificate of analysis. So all these labs have certificates that they hand over with their vitamin raw uh, or supplement raw material to the distributors. These are the middlemen because the end users, the marketing companies, don't want to deal with 50 different um, entities. They generally deal with distributors who will collect the raw materials from the labs, they will collect all the certificates. They might or might not do their own independent analysis of the powders, and then they go to a manufacturer. A manufacturer is typically not the entity that sells you or bears liability for the vitamin. So now, the now brand is buying perhaps from a manufacturer, perhaps from distributors, or perhaps from, so they're not vertically integrated, most of them, 90% of them are not. And so it's the same certificate of analysis that goes up the supply chain? Yeah, it goes up the chain. And the certificate of analysis is made in the country of origin. Remember that, because we're going to come to that in about mm -hmm. five minutes. Uh, but a more diligent company might analyze it independently. It might take a look at all the supplement ingredients and do its own analysis. It might do an analysis for herbicides, pesticides, heavy metals, and so on but you don't know unless you ask them. Well, and not only that, uh, poison types of things aside, also there's companies who have tested vitamins mm -hmm. and found it didn't even have what they said it had. So like if you say yes. you have ginkgo biloba, exactly. it exactly. just It was chalk, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. And so that is something someone's gotta keep track of. And when there are too many middlemen involved, people lose track of what's actually in that vitamin because all you're getting is a you know, a ton, a vat of white powder. And unless you trust that distributor and you have uh, had years of relationship, even with that, I would say companies need to test their and analyze their vitamins for uh, to be give a voracious account of, of what it actually contains. 
So vitamins are made um, in a manufacturing process. There's first a preliminary check where the, whoever is manufacturing checks to make sure it really is what they're claiming it to be. Then they blend them. Vitamins, mm -hmm. minerals will come in the form of bricks or pellets. Um, and they could be mixed up with cellulose to bind them, but in the industrial process, they might not be able to you know, use those bricks. So they gotta shred them, then they gotta reformulate them. They, they would use more fillers for that. The other thing is if you need a tiny, teeny, tiny amount of vitamin, it's still gotta be put in a capsule because no one's gonna sell you a vitamin the size of a pinhead. So they typically cover it up or mix it up with fillers and the fillers could be cellulose, starch, you know, powders like magnesium stearate, so on and so forth. And we don't know what, what the sources of those fillers are. And those need to be checked as well. So do the fillers have certificates of analysis? Too? No, they don't. The vitamins typically have certificates of analysis. The fillers are very, very important because you don't want to eat a filler that you're allergic to or you, you may be a diabetic and you don't want a sugar filler, you may have some other problem. So you wanna check what the fillers are and the sources of the fillers. Typically, cellulose fillers are made from uh, industrially grown plant material that is processed or petrochemicals or petrochemicals. So they're pre-blended, then there's a wet granulation. If, the, if it goes through a manufacturing process, it's gotta be like dough. So it's gotta be wet, wetted again so that it can be regrouped, reformulated into the right size pieces. Um, then it goes and it's cut into tablets or encapsulated. Um, it is weighed and mixed in a big vat before that happens so that uh, they know that it has the right RDAs of whatever is listed on that. Then it's tableted, then it's coated, and the coating is different colors perhaps to you know, differentiate between the different types, but the colors are very, very toxic. So you wanna be careful about not eating supplements that are colored. Uh, they're coated, frequently buffered or not buffered, or they're unpleasant tasting, so they might be coated with, I don't know, sugar or something. And then they're packaged and shot out to you. So by the time a vitamin has come to you, it has traveled, it has made at least two to four 15,000 mile round trips between the United States and the rest of the world. Yeah. <laughs> um, big carbon footprint. Very big carbon footprint. And you don't know really what's in it unless you have a reliable certificate of analysis. But the Codex Alimentarius uh, recognizes this as a category of food. Multivitamin vitamin supplements are commonly provided in combination with minerals. Um, and the definition is a multivitamin mineral supplement is defined in the U.S. as a supplement containing, remember this, three or more vitamins and minerals that does not include herbs, hormones, or drugs where each vitamin and mineral is included at a dose below the tolerable upper limit as determined by the FDA so that it presents no adverse risk. So in its most benign form, a vitamin poses no risks to you. In its more harmless, harmful form, it may present a risk of toxicity to you or it may do nothing for you. In certain cases, it will do something for you. And those are the vitamins that you wanna focus on, the kind of vitamins that are made from uh, real foods, uh, pre preferably not synthetic synthetically made from natural ingredients. But there's only a 10% chance that you're gonna find those in the marketplace. Um, vitamins were kinda invented or came into being in the 1930s. And that's when they became freely available in your pharmacies and grocery stores. But very soon thereafter, within about 10 years, um, in 1934, there's a company called Neutralite that introduced the first vitamins but they were made from natural dried and compressed vegetable and fruit concentrate. And I believe standard process uses still organic pressed and dried ingredients, but almost nobody else does. Hmm. But you wanna check. You wanna check to make sure that they use natural vegetable <coughs> and fruit concentrates or natural concentrates of um, non-synthetically made elements. You, you can't buy standard process off the shelf at a no. store. You have to go through, go through some medical person yeah. to get it. Oh, standard process. 
Yeah. But uh, I'm not certain that they're organic, so you might want to check. Um, standard, standard process. That's a company. That's a company. Yeah. Standard process. In the 1940s, they found that making these vitamins was not affordable. No one would buy a vitamin that was made from natural ingredients and pay you know 50 bucks a bottle for those. So synthetic vitamin vitamins came into being in the 1940s. <coughs> and about 90, I would say 95% of what you see on the shelves uh, at the vitamin shop are synthetic vitamins today. So there's a problem of quality, which is the impurities and toxins are concentrated, greatly concentrated. Anyone got questions? Did Mirabai join? Uh, comment. Okay. Um, there are extraction methods that are used that are not mechanical. In the old days when they made vitamins and uh, vitamins from food materials, there were not no chemicals used. They were dehydrated, they were powdered, and then you got those powders. Which is why Callum's powders, I bought this tiny little powder for 50 bucks because that was a real organically grown vegetable powder that was then dehydrated, concentrated, and so on. But I just most people cannot afford to pay 50 bucks for 20 different vitamins for a family of five. They contain allergens. Many of them contain allergens because they're made from industrial waste products, most of them. They have manufacturing impurities, which is the heavy metals that come into the manufacturing process. They're not organic and frequently they're made from byproducts that people want to turn into. So all these bars, the cliff bars, and the all these bars are made from proteins that are pressed out of oils um, and you know they would toss it into animal feed or you know incurred great costs to dispose of them and now you can market it as health food which is which is a great source of revenue for a lot of these companies um, about 90 percent of all the vitamins vitamin C that is sold in the United States today is made in China so guess where that certificate of analysis is coming from? <clears throat> and a lot of it is made from keto acids. If it is made from wheat or corn, again, it's, it's largely genetically modified. 50% of the world's aspirin comes from China. Uh, the majority of the vitamins A, B12, and E are manufactured in China. Vitamin A is not made from cod livers anymore. It's made from acetone, which is a synthetic uh, industrial uh, solution, uh, you know, for compound. cleaning paint. Awesome. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Vitamin C is made from keto acids. Um, what is keto acid? Keto acid is a, a synthetically made uh, product uh, from from chemicals, basically, not from uh, what it used to be made, which is they would take wheat and and uh, corn, ferment it, turn it into sugars, then the sugars would be. Uh, uh, alkalinized and then it would be turned into esters and the esters would be acidified into ascorbic acid. It's, it's odd to me that we're on a ketogenic diet mm -hmm. but this keto acid is not. It's yes, keto. because it's, so being on a ketogenic diet your body is making the ketones. It's not made in a factory. I see. And these are ke keto acids that are made very synthetically and very have very different um, qualities than what you make yourself. So, about vitamin C, Yes. because you sent the um, video mm -hmm. to us, uh, uh, this Dr. Bernstein. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And talks mm -hmm. about doing high dose vitamin C mm -hmm. and then lysine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's for cardiac issues. Oh, yes. But also just in vitamin C for colds and flus and so on. So what vitamin C is he talking about there for? Um, mm -hmm. Doctors don't concern themselves with the quality of the vitamins. But they've had success yeah. with... Yes, yes. So, so that's where you want to be careful. If you're very sick, large doses of a vitamin will have some effect. Whether it's the desired effect and whether long term it's a good idea to have a vitamin that's industrially processed is something that you want to think about. Well, why wouldn't you just recommend using an orange or fruit type? I mean, yes, it just yes. seems a bit, um, yes. you know. But some people can't eat the sugars. 
Oh, okay. or, or, I mean, I'm just, you know, yeah. I but, just you know, the liver system, contains, so. I mean, you know, green vegetables contain vitamin C. So you could, you, you would get more than your day supply from eating, you know, dandelion greens or spinach or, or whatever. So, and in food form, it's much more assimilable. The vitamin C in food is not going to give you the runs. It's not going to be toxic to you. It doesn't have other ingredients and fillers and so on. So think about because that. This information is quite shocking. <laughs> I mean, yes. Right. Yes. That's, that's scary here. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> I love it. This like yes. a horror film. Yeah. <laughs> and so even the vitamin C, you know, it has fillers, microcosylia, you know, the s terrified vitamin C. Uh, lactose, calcium, maltodextrin, magnesium stearate, it has flowing agents. So when you make vitamins in the manufacturing process, you can't just uh, shove it and have it and get encapsulated. If it doesn't move on the assembly line, you got to add flow agents to it so it doesn't cake. And none of those are food. None of these are food. They're fillers, and they're often very toxic. Vitamin C. There's a vitamin C you can pass there. <laughs> There you go. It's non-GMO. And then, the so, so besides, exactly, besides the GMO part, there's a whole bunch of other. Then there's disintegration agents. Remember that vitamins got put together and were glued together, but they want in your belly for these vitamins to get separated. So they got to add to them disintegration agents that when they enter your belly will help to dissolve the vitamin. That's more chemicals that are mixed in with the actual vitamin. There was some study at some point where people were taking vitamins and apparently it, it wasn't even, some of some brand it wasn't breaking down. Yes. Just, you know, yeah. Most, most vitamins get excreted out completely undigested. And, and the porta potty, any, everyone heard of the porta potty story? It's mm -hmm. not urban legend. Porta potty cleaners often find at the bottom of their porta potties completely undigested vitamins with oh. the names of the manufacturers on the pills even. Wow. And so, you may be peeing and pooping away um, a lot of your vitamins. <laughs> Poop and go. Well, and the fact that it would not break down. It wouldn't even disintegrate. in liquid. Yeah. I mean, yes. it, it's, yes. you have digestive yes. problems. I can understand maybe yes. it would pass all the way through, but then uh, to sit in the bottom of a blue box for a week. Right, yes. right, right. Well, it's still not dissolved. Haven't they tested certain pills by putting them into vinegar? And if they don't dissolve in vinegar, they're not going to dissolve it. And, and you're in your stomach. Yeah. Or, or for reasons unknown, even if it passes through your stomach, you know, half the pill gets pooped out because it was bound together with such strong fillers and lubricants and, and, uh, and sort of coalescing agents that it cannot disinte disintegrate in your elementary canal. Interesting. So if you spent like, where's that vitamin thing? If you spent like, uh, not to bash anyone, so I'm gonna hold the brand away, not to bash anyone, I'm gonna say about, you know, 70, 80% of this goes right through you. And what remains contains a lot of this stuff. It contains well, a lot of this stuff. Label on that. So that's yeah. a vitamin C. <clears throat> yeah, that's a vitamin C. And uh, the other ingredients are cellulose capsules, tearic acid, probably to make it move, magnesium stearate, vegetable source, and silica. So these are, they're not in small quantities, and this doesn't refer to manufacturing impurities, which can be toxic metals. Typically, uh, there's anywhere from 500 to several thousand micrograms of aluminum, cadmium, nickel, and things that are, that are coming off of um, assembly lines, drug assembly lines. So buying like rosehip powder would mm -hmm. be a good solution for vitamin yes, C because yes. that's a food and yes. it's yeah. not being yeah. augmented. Yeah. So the best thing you can do if you want to go uh, this route is buy herbs, the actual plants, plant powders, and brew up your own teas and they're pretty rich. And more than that, uh, I would say food. More than that, food. Uh, then there's wax, which is given, um, which is coated, uh, which coats the tablets to give them color or flavor or to differentiate the tablet from maybe other doses of the same, same kind of tablet. So there's a lot of other ingredients that you want to be careful about. Uh, manufacturing impurity, aluminum, cadmium, nickel, hexane. The hexane is a carcinogen. Aluminum is a very potent neurotoxin. Cadmium, nickel, very, very neurotoxic. And I know of people who eat 20 pills a day, 20 vitamin and mineral supplements.